Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. Today we're sharing five quick tips for working with HTML forms. Now these tips are fairly simple and even obvious, so if you're new to web design, I'm hoping you'll find these, uh, these all very helpful. But even if you're an experienced web designer, I'm still hoping you can pick up a tip or two that you didn't know before. Now it's also important to understand that HTML forms are a very uh, common and important aspect to web design. They can process uh, something as simple as the inquiry form on your contact page right the way through to uh, e-commerce orders. So forms are very important to, uh, you know, to make sure that as a designer you understand them and not only make them as usable as possible but also make them uh, look nice and inviting. So the, the first tip I'm going to share is working with uh, radio input fields. And the, uh, the second question on this contact form that I've quickly put together in Dreamweaver asks the question whether you're male, female, or even if you're not sure. Now as a user, I would expect to be able to click on the text or the image to select that option. However, on this third option, and this is what I see on quite a lot of websites, is that I can't select that, uh, that option. I have to actually click the radio button. So the way that I've done that on these two elements here is to wrap them in what's called a uh, label tag. And if we jump to the code here, you can see the label tag that wraps around the image and also the, the wording like there, I'm female. And inside this label tag is our input field. Whereas the third one, not sure, isn't actually wrapped in a label tag. So wrapping your uh, input radio buttons inside a label tag allows you to have a larger selectable area. So that's the first tip. The second tip is working with uh, select menus. As you can see here, I'm just simply asking for the user to specify which age group they belong to. Now what I see quite a lot of uh, web designers doing is specifying within the option tag a value, and usually that value is the same as the visible option. So what's important to understand is that the option that's inside the option tag is what's presented to the user in the drop down menu. So that's what we're seeing here. The value allows the web designer to specify a different value to what's shown in the form. However, if the value is the same as the visible option, then you don't actually need to specify a value. You can simply wrap the value in an option tag like that, and that can save quite a little bit of time. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is if you have an input field that you want to already contain text, um, it's quite nice that when you click inside that option, the text that's in, already in there disappears and allows you to type out a new message. So if I clear that, you see it drops back in the default. Now this is a very simple technique using a little bit of JavaScript. So let's find that field. So here's our input field, and we've added an on blur, an on click, and a value. So essentially the value inside the box is what we start with, i.e. football. When the user clicks inside the box on click, the value goes to nothing so that the user can enter their information. And then when they unclick out of that box, if the value is still left as empty, it puts back in i.e. football. Now you don't need to worry too much about how that JavaScript's working because I'll make that code uh, copy and pasteable from our supporting blog post. So that's tip number three, again, very useful. And you see a lot of websites that contain information in the input fields. And when you click inside, it doesn't actually remove the text. You have to actually delete it before you can type uh, type your message. Tip number four is uh, tab indexing. In a form like this, for example, it's very easy to, uh, to type and use the tab button on the keyboard to navigate to the next element. However, in some more complicated forms, you may wish to adjust the order that the uh, things get tabbed to. So let's say, for example, if I was typing here, and then when I typed tab, I wanted someone to jump straight inside the message box to be able to type. I can do that by adding the tab index. So let's go to the first one. So our input field here. And I'm using uh, Dreamweaver's uh, code hinting to help me with this. So tab index, one. And then if I go down to my text area, tab index, two. So if I save that and refresh the page, type out my name, and then I push tab, you can see that's jumped me straight down into the message box. So tib, uh, tab indexing, again, is a useful tip. Now tip number five is just uh, a tip for general usability. And as a designer, it's very important to, uh, to look at your forms objectively to make sure that they're as good as they can be. And this consists of things like uh, having as few fields as possible. 
Uh, people, when they're filling out forms, want it to be simple. So if there's too many options, too many fields to fill out, people are less likely to complete that form. Reset buttons. You tend to not see these very often on websites, and the reason is because people accidentally click them thinking it's a submit button, and obviously it clears all the information they've just spent time um, adding in. So it's best not to have a reset button on your forms. Uh, the next thing with usability is to make sure you have nice, big, clear fields. So these are actually quite small in this example, and even my uh, text area for my message is very small. So it's important to have nice, big fields. And also, finally, if you make your compulsory fields clear to see. So I've uh, you know added a, a asterisk to the end of my fields that I would want to be uh, compulsory. There's nothing more frustrating as a website user than completing a contact form pushing submit and then finding out that you've missed out certain information that you didn't aware that you weren't aware sorry was compulsory so I hope these uh, five tips have been helpful like I said all of the information that we've been discussing in this video is available to uh, to copy from our supporting blog post at createdesign.co.uk forward slash blog